Good morning. Welcome to Harmony of the Gospels. Um, today we're going to be in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 20 through 24, and Luke 10, verses 13 through 16. Okay? All right, let's say a quick word of prayer and we'll get started. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we ask you to please bless this lesson today. Please use it for your will and way, Lord. Lord, this is your word I'm teaching, it's not mine. Lord Jesus, I thank you, and as, as the verse says, that all your words return to you, and, and none shall return void. They would all be fulfilled. Lord Jesus, I praise thee and thank thee. I look forward to your return. In your name, Jesus, amen. All right, so let's read real quick in Matthew 11, verses 20 through 24, okay? All right, Matthew 11, 20 through 24. Then began he to upbraid the cities, wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Okay? All right? Woe unto thee, Cherusim! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. Okay? All right? And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. If, for if the mighty works which had been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained unto this day. And we all know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? It was destroyed for its wickedness, okay? But if I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee, all right? It's a pretty interesting, interesting set of verses here that Jesus Christ uh, states, okay? And so um, it states, uh, that he says, woe, woe, okay? It's woe unto those who do not repent. Woe unto those who do not repent, okay? The, the book of Matthew here has this account after the tribute to John the Baptist. And Jesus says, woe to these two cities, Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum, okay? Um, so in the book of Luke, it has a, an account that's integrated after the commissioning of the mission of the 70, okay? All right, now you may say, well, okay, that's interesting. So, you know, when you think about everything that's written about Jesus, okay, um, it's often stated that if everything had been written about Jesus, the, the world couldn't handle the books on it, okay? Or, um, as in the book of John, at the very end of the book of John, uh, John writes, um, these statements, and he says, um, these, think this, these things are written, um, these things are written, okay, where is it at? Okay, talk about how these things are written um, so that you might believe on the Son of Jesus Christ. I mean the name, oh, here we go. So in, in John chapter 20, verse 31, okay, John 20, verse 31. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. That's what's written here, okay? Not everything was written, okay? In verse 30, if you jump up to verse 30, it says, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. So there's many things that Jesus did which are not written down, okay? All right? So... Um, and also, too, Jesus said things at many different times, too. So all we have is the four Gospels as to the accounts of, of the life of Jesus. Okay, that's what we've got, all right? We've got the whole Bible, which is about Jesus Christ. Okay, the whole Bible covers Jesus Christ from the Old Testament to the end of the New Testament, from the beginning to the end. It's all about Jesus Christ, okay? All right, so so the, the two accounts found here in the Gospels, okay, they are... Uh, pretty close, okay, a little bit different because one happened at one time, one happened at another time, all right? So by studying the Bible in its entirety, what you see is you see a beautiful web that's all about Jesus Christ that's woven throughout the Bible. It's beautiful, okay? All right, so in both accounts, Jesus is explaining how the gospel is going out to people and that people will reject, okay? All right? Now, or they will find fault, okay, and dismiss it, okay? They're, they're going to reject, find fault, procrastinate, whatever, okay? All right, now, here's an interesting thought. Jesus came to earth and based his ministry out of Capernaum, okay? 
and many people benefited from his ministry in Capernaum and Chorazin and Bethsaida, okay? But they rejected him as the Messiah. They rejected him, okay? All right? So, so these cities that Jesus was consistently in and around all the time greatly benefited from his ministry, and many were healed, okay? And But many rejected him, all right? Pretty sad, okay? Matthew 11, verse 20, Then began he to upbraid the cities, wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Okay? All right? So in the account in Luke 10, uh, verses 13 through 16, um, Jesus had just finished the commissioning of the 70. Okay? And, and so uh, when we get into that verse here, we will talk about it, but he did just commissioning the 70. And he tells them, hey, look, we go into a city and they reject you. He said, shake the dust off your feet and move on. Okay? All right? Because they rejected you. Now, so, so Jesus begins to denounce these cities here um, that rejected people. And Jesus had been preaching and healing in these cities for a long while. So wisdom was provided to the people, okay? But the people rejected. So now Jesus upbraids and denounces them for their sin of rejection, okay? Their sin of, uh, like, hey, look, I don't need to worry about this stuff this guy's teaching, okay? And they, they rejected him, okay? So he begins upbraiding. So what was their sin, okay? They repented not. They repented not, okay? All right? So when you consider the gospel that the Son of God, he came to earth, he condescended from his position in heaven and came to earth to preach the gospel, to die on the cross for our sins. When you consider that, that's what Jesus Christ preached and teaching, okay? All right? The idea of not repenting of your sin becomes a very shameful and ungrateful act, okay, for what Jesus Christ did for us. The great doctrine that both John the Baptist and Jesus Christ and the apostles preached was repentance, okay? Repentance, okay? Turning from your sin. When you consider how the children, in verse 17, who piped and mourned, okay? Pastors across the nation preached the love of Christ. They preached the joy and the love of coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. They also preach death and hell, okay, which is also very true as well, okay, the mourning of death and hell, okay, where salvation is provided for all those who will repent, and there's joy in the receiving of Jesus Christ, okay, the piping of the love, okay, of Christ, his sacrifice for us, where the mourning for hell and a final death of your existence forever separated from your creator yeah that's horrible okay all right okay so, so this this preaching and teaching in this way is to compel people to change their minds and their ways and turn from their wicked sins to repent leaving your sins behind and turning to god okay isaiah 1 verse 18 states god states this he says come now let us reason together saith the lord though your sins be as scarlet they shall be as white as snow, okay? So when you turn and you accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, that's what happens to your sin. They're cast as far as the east is from the west. They're cast in the deepest part of the sea, okay? All right? Jesus wants the people, all people, to consider their ways and turn from their sin. That's what he wants, okay? He wants us to do this. Jesus now, because these people did not repent and did not turn, okay, Jesus will now reprove the cities of their sins, okay? so that they may see their sin and repent, but these cities would reject, okay? All right, so Matthew 11, verse 21, Jesus says, Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! So Chorazin was, was near, okay, Capernaum, okay? It was near the Sea of Galilee. It was about two miles north of Capernaum, okay? Then you have Bethsaida. It was on the northeast shore of the Sea of Galilee, okay? Philip the Tetrarch rebuilt Bethsaida um, and called it Julius after Julia, the daughter of Caesar Augustus. Okay, so so Jesus goes on to say here: For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Ashes. Okay. So Jesus pronounces these woes of condemnation on these two cities. What he does. Okay. All right. Because they have rejected. So these two. Cities had greatly benefited from Jesus Christ's healing powers and miracles along with the power of the gospel, okay? 
Um, but neither city had repented, okay? Jesus was sent as a light to the region of Galilee because the people sat in darkness, okay, and the shadow of death. The people have been greatly persecuted in this region, all right? So in Matthew 4, verse 16, it states this, The people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat in the region in the shadow of death, a light was sprung up, or light is sprung up, sorry. Um, so right there, you know, it shows you that Jesus was the light, okay? So the people had hope again. They had a reprieve from death and destruction, okay? Jesus brought them joy and light, okay? All right? So Jesus had come to provide them healing and a way to escape through the gospel, okay? All right, now, Isaiah 9, verse 2 is the prophecy of this. The people that walked in darkness had seen a great light, they that dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shine. Okay? All right? So the arrival of Jesus to this region would be a special blessing from God. Okay? Special blessing for these people because it's so much persecution that happened in this region. This region experienced a devastating judgment during the days of Isaiah, and God had now blessed them. Okay? So it was beautiful. Okay? It is believed that during the days of Jesus' ministry that there was very little sickness, okay, uh, very little disease because of all the miracles of healing that Jesus performed. But the people still did not believe and they would not repent. They wanted a sign, okay? They wanted to be wild. They wanted to be amazed, okay? But they did not want to repent because Jesus knew what was in their heart, okay? Jesus stated in Matthew 12, verse 39, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given it, okay, but the sign of the prophet Jonas, okay, which was Jonas spent three days in the building of the well, and which meant that Jesus was spent three days, okay, and rise on the third day. So repentance, repentance is key to forgiveness, okay? In this day, this day and hour that we live, okay, people who realize that they had been condemned, okay, so, I'm sorry, during Jesus' day, okay, during Jesus' day, okay, the people who realized that they had been condemned, okay, were put on sackcloth and ashes, okay. Sackcloth was a scratchy bag, okay, that you would cut a hole in, two holes for your arms, and you put it on, okay, and you would throw ashes on your head, okay. Sackcloth was used to carry grain in this day, all right, okay. It's kind of like a burlap sack, if anyone's ever seen one of those, okay. And then the people would sit in ashes, throw ashes on their head, okay? Okay, so the idea was we are created from the dust of the earth, okay? And one day our bodies will return to the dust. If the great creator condemns you, you might as well just go back to the dust, okay? And beg for forgiveness, okay? All right, so Luke states in, in 10 verse 13 that Tyre and Sidon were sitting in sackcloth and ashes, okay? That's what they would have done. They would have sat there in sackcloth and ashes, okay? This is where we recognize that we are just worms before a mighty God, okay? We need to repent to a mighty God who controls all things. I'm telling you right now, okay? Jesus explains that Tyre and Sidon would have repented just like when Jonah went to Nineveh and preached and the city repented in sackcloth and ashes, okay? Jesus now states what will happen in the day of judgment. That's what Jesus is going to state here now. He says this, okay? Matthew 11, verse 22. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon, Tyre, sorry, Tyre and Sidon, at the day of judgment than for you, okay? Judgment. I'll tell you folks, judgment, that day is coming for all people. It's coming for this earth. Judgment. It's coming for all the nations on this earth. It's coming for all leaders. All people will stand before a great mighty God one day. In Revelations chapter 20, verse 13, Revelation chapter 20, verse 13, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. I'm going to tell you right now. You might think, well, wow, I'll, I'll be judged for my works. I'm okay. Okay, <laughs> tell you what. Your works are as filthy rags. Okay. Don't ever decide to stand before God and be judged, okay? 
It's a mistake because you're going to lose, all right? The lost will be judged according to what they have done one day, okay? Not that they will never escape hell, but the judgment of your life and the way you lived, the burden of sin that you carry, that you did not repent of and give up at the cross for not trusting Jesus and your for rejection of God's word, okay? Guess what? Your sin, you have to pay for it, okay? Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for your sin. And all you got to do is take it to the cross, lay it down, and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, okay? All right? So if you've got to stand for God, you're going to lose because someone has to pay the price for your sin. And the payment for your sin is death, okay? It's death, okay? It's forever being uh, rejected by your creator and sent to the lake of fire, okay? All right? So... Now, here's another thing. You will also not be able to hide anything from God on this day. You can't hide, okay? God knows all things. So here's a, here's a statement from Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Every single one is going to be brought into judgment, okay? All people... All world leaders will have to answer for their deeds and actions. There will be no immunity from judgment, okay? Uh, national leaders, you know, world leaders have immunity, okay? All right, um, you know, uh, people that are emissaries, you know, they have immunity, okay? All right, okay, I'll tell you right now, there will be no immunity on this day, no immunity from judgment, okay? You can't say, well, those were state secrets. Guess what? There are no secrets before God. Okay, not at all. Nothing's top secret, nothing's secret, nothing's, nothing's confidential, okay? Okay, it's all going to be brought out into the open before God, okay? Romans 2, verse 16, 2, verse 16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel, okay? The gospel of Jesus Christ, that's our gospel, okay? There is no secret that will remain hidden on that day when Christ judges the nations. No secret, okay? Nothing will be top secret. Nothing will be secret. Nothing will be confidential. Nothing will be hidden. No one will say to Jesus, hey, Jesus, you can't say that. That's secret. And no, no one's going to say that. It's all going to come out. Every single bit of it, folks. Think about that. Every single bit, okay? All right, now, Matthew 25, verse 31 through 32. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. Okay? Just like that. All right? One day, all kings, all presidents, all rulers, all dictators, no matter who you are, whether you're a communist, <laughs> Whether you are an unbeliever, Islamist, whatever you may be, you're going to stand and bend the knee before Christ Jesus and be judged, okay? All right? If you had a chance to accept, or maybe the gospel was preached to you, okay? And maybe you heard it, okay, multiple times and rejected. Or maybe your family was saved and your children talked to you multiple times about, about Christ, okay? Maybe you've got multiple Bibles available to you, and but you reject every single bit of it. You reject it all. Okay? All you want to do is condemn. Okay? Maybe God blessed your life and you failed to glorify him. Okay? Will, so, well, I'm going to tell you what. For those things and what you did not do, you will be judged for your rejection. Okay? But let's say there's a man or a tribe from some far location, very remote, who never had a chance to hear or know the word of God the way you did, okay? With what you were given, okay? I'll tell you what, that day, I don't know what that day is going to be like for you, but I'm telling you, there you will be judged, okay? And you will be judged differently, okay? The Bible states that the judgment of that tribe or person will be more tolerable on that day of judgment because you will be judged for those lost works which you do not do. I'll tell you, okay? It's a warning, all right? All things will come out, okay? And this is why Jesus says in Matthew 11, verse 23 through 24, 
in thou Capernaum, okay? Jesus based his ministry out of Capernaum, okay? Which are exalted unto heaven shall be brought down to hell. They had the Son of God living in their city, okay? They were exalted to heaven, okay? If the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, and we know what Sodom and Gomorrah is, it was a wicked, wicked, filthy city. And from what I understand, there was only one man righteous in the city, and that was Lot, okay? And he was taken out by angels along with some of his family, okay? All right, so, so you think about Sodom, and God rained hellfire and brimstone down on Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? Okay, so Jesus goes on to say, it would have remained until this day, but I say unto you that it should be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee, okay? Because Capernaum was exalted to heaven. The Son of God lived there and did his works, but they rejected so this should bring fear into anyone's life when they realize that there's nothing going to be hidden. It's all going to be brought out into the open. Every wicked thing you've done, okay? All right? Okay? So anyone that does not know God, okay, this should be a fear to you. You should recognize you need to turn to Christ. Christ knows the hearts and minds of all people in all times and all places. Christ came to this earth. He lived here, okay? He preached here. He gave the gospel to all those who would believe, okay? All right. Propentance of mankind is slow and delayed by the things of this world, okay? Your eyes and thoughts get trapped by this world, okay? By the evil of this world. I'm telling you right now, okay? The United States is greatly blessed because of the firm stance for the word of God that it's had in the past, okay? Our nation now, today, refuses to repent for its many, many sins, okay? One of the great sins of abortion that goes on. It's horrific, okay? All right? In that day of judgment, all means of grace, the gospel, and blessing that were enjoyed by our nation or a person, okay, will certainly come into account one day when you are judged, okay? All right, now... God will inquire and require, okay, not only about how bad we were, but as to why we did not follow and why we did not use the things which he gave us, okay, all right? There will be a day where introspection and self-reproach will be required of all those who are rejected. Because if you think your judgment, if you're lost, is just going to be quick, down and dirty and over with, no, no, it's not, <laughs> Telling you, my friend, your life is going to play before your eyes, okay? All things will come out, okay? It will be hell to those who stand before God in judgment, okay? It's going to be hell to you. I'm telling you, man, it's going to be horrific when they realize that they had a fair opportunity on earth to repent and accept the Son of God, Jesus Christ. I'm warning you, okay? I'm telling you, all right? Most people who are convicted and want to procrastinate or put it off to another day, okay, may not have that option, okay? Today is the day for salvation, for trusting in Jesus. Tomorrow may be too late. When you die, you will not get a second chance. The only chance you have is while you walk on this earth. I'll tell you that right now. Procrastination is opportunity's assassin. I'm telling you. Okay, now is the time to trust in Jesus Christ. All right, thank you for listening.